Welcome to running on reddit. R slash entitled parents, where the entitlement knows no bounds. So, this just happened last night, Friday the 13th. I had been having some pretty bad abdominal pain since the 12th. Well yesterday, I went to a local clinic and found out that I had appendicitis. The clinic called an ambulance and was transported to the big hospital. When I got there they took me to a room had me strip but naked and rushed me to the OR. As we were moving through the ER this Karen stopped us and asked why I was being rushed before her daughter since they have been here longer. The nurse told her that I was being rushed for emergency surgery. She said, I don't care my daughter is in pain and he needs to wait his, me, turn. The nurse said, ma'am, your daughter has a sprained ankle and this gentleman could die. She reluctantly moved out of the way when she saw a couple police officers start walking towards her. Well, surgery went great and I didn't die. Was released at 12 o'clock this afternoon. OP later mentioned the entitled mother called the ambulance for her daughter's sprained ankle. The mother spared no expense. This story is from a few years ago when I worked in the legal department of a 1000 plus store national retailer. As part of my job, I handled customer complaints that elevated when the customer threatened legal action. The cast is very simple. Me equals me. M equals Karen, who was also an attorney. R equals our awesome attorney. Our customer service call center forwarded M's call to me after she threatened legal action. M left a message claiming that she was not provided $10 in customer reward coupons, spend $200, receive a $10 coupon in the mail sort of thing. This was before wraps, based on her purchase of clothing for her son and daughter for back to school. I looked into it and called M back. It turned out we had an old address associated with her rewards account. No big deal, right? I spoke with M and offered to send her the original $10 coupon and an additional $25 for her trouble to the correct address. That did not satisfy M. She claimed we should have known her address and threatened to sue us if we didn't pay her $1000 in cash. Her rationale was that it would cost us at least $1000 to defend the suit. She was in a state in which our company did not have any offices, so we should just pay it to her. I declined but still forwarded her the $10 coupon she was entitled to pursue and to our awards program. Sure enough, she sued us for breach of contract, fraud, and any other conceivable charge. I went to my boss, the COO, and told him the story. He asked what I wanted to do. I said I'd rather pay legal fees to a defense attorney than pay him, and he agreed. I contacted AE, explained the situation to him, and I crap you not. He said, in a southern drawl, I get to sue M. I should be paying you guys. There are a lot of lawyers in this legal community who would love to sue her as she is reckless, unpleasant and a total pain in the but to deal with. I'll gladly take your case. He agreed to defend us at a reduced rate. Part of our defense strategy was to counter sue her under the state's frivolous lawsuit statute, which would move the suit from small claims court to the larger civil court. A e filed our answer and counterclaim. Although M was an attorney, she was not a defense attorney, so she had to engage her own attorney to defend against the counterclaim. After a couple of hearings, she offered to settle for no more money exchanged. She didn't even get the extra $25 coupon I offered her and the dismissal of both suits. I talked with A about continuing our claim, but he advised it would probably be worth settling and being done with it rather than being vindictive. Although vindictive would have been fun. Courts tend not to like that, so I agreed. My company ended up paying AE $900 in attorney's fees. A later called and told us that the attorney M engaged charged her $1,700 to defend the suit. Although I would have liked to continue with our suit, I think her having to pay $1,700 over a $10 coupon sent to the wrong address is sufficient justice. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. So, my stepmom is British, Welsh to be exact. For those who don't know, Wales is a little hump west of England and north of Cornwall. It's a beautiful place known for sheep, alcohol, and mistakes involving sheep and alcohol. My stepmom is ethnically Welsh, but raised in England. Despite this, my nan and Tade, Welsh for grandma and grandpa, insisted on her and her brother learning Welsh to preserve their heritage. 
The Welsh are a proud people, and so they wanted to ensure their children were as immersed as they could be. So she grew up bilingual, went to uni, got a job working for a certain tech giant, and moved to the US to help train their staff. A few years later she met my dad and joined the family. At the time I was still getting over my mom, so her presence was less than welcome. Despite this, my stepmom never pushed me or tried to buy her way in. She gave me the room I needed to grieve and, when I was ready, showered me with enough affection to make up for the lost time. She has my eternal love and respect for it and has become my second mother. Now, we live in a large town in the Midwest, being west of the seaboard, but east of the Mississippi, so while most people are open to outsiders, there's the usual few who just want to ruin everything. Around Christmas time, I was visiting home from college with my girlfriend, Charlie, whose awesomeness has been detailed in another post, enjoying some quality girls time with my stepmom. We were in the mall, searching for some place, that's old plastic modeling, glue for my dad. He's really into Warhammer. During this my stepmom is on the phone with her brother, who still lives in the UK, catching up and sharing some laughs. They were speaking Welsh to each other, which happened to offend a woman who has incerned the title of Karen. We were standing in front of the mall map, trying to find the hobby store, when I heard a loud scoff from behind us. I turned to see a woman dressed in a rather nice looking business suit, carolling her kids away, like they'd just encountered a streaker. Now I was ready to let it go, but Charlie can get very defensive of people she likes, so she ended up calling her out. Something offend you ma'am. She seemed to ponder her next move, before responding with that oh so stupid phrase. You're in America. When you're here, you speak English. Not Muslim. My kids don't need to hear that. Now I've met some pretty stupid people in my life. Even dated one. But never ever have I heard of someone confusing Welsh for Arabic which is what I assumed she meant. They are two very different languages from two very different cultures. The only similarities between them is how little I understand them. However, for someone to be so offended by someone speaking another language, they probably also didn't immerse themselves too much in other cultures. To her, the world probably began in New York and ended in Los Angeles. It was at this point that my stepmom hung up. Now I know that Americans get a bad rap and all, she said in an obvious British accent. But it doesn't help when you actively conform to the stereotype. Oh my god, Karen said with righteous indignation. Your accent is awful. Where did you even learn to speak English? My stepmom held the most deadpan expression she could. England. I swear I could smell the smoke coming from the flaming mess inside Karen's skull. She looked at Charlie and I, a pair of shockingly Caucasian college brats, and then my stepmom, our even paler chaperone, took a moment to process what she was doing, and then walked away, dragging a group of embarrassed looking tweens with her. I have to give her credit. At least she knew when to quit. My stepmom chuckled, muttered an offensive sounding Welsh phrase, and then helped us scan the map for the hobby shop. The rest of the day went well, and we had a funny story to tell my dad when we got back. To all my bigots out there who get offended when someone speaks another language, get over yourselves. The world doesn't revolve around you. To all my bilingual friends out there who speak their native tongues, good for you. It's important to keep your culture alive. And to Karen, next time you try to accost someone for speaking something other than English, at least get the right continent. Here's a joke, I read that the Welsh invented the condom in the middle ages by using a piece of sheep's intestine. The English later improved the design by taking it out of the sheep first. If you like the content and want to support the channel, like and subscribe right now or you'll be running on fumes. My story is nothing special compared to others, probably because I'm a butthole and don't fold to anyone. Cast. Me. Probably Jesus. You never know. Girlfriend. Girl Fury. M. Some dumby head who doesn't respect firearms. CK. Adorable kid who was just curious. MK. My kid. The cutest kid in the world. I'm the future stepfather, if you're curious. On to the story. I'm at the park with my daughter and girlfriend helping her play on the slide, as CK is running around with strangers kid, playing with a fake gun and finger guns. Now, I'm trying to make it a personal habit to always carry my gun with me wherever I go. 
I fully conceal it as much as possible, but I'm guessing, when I reached up to put my baby girl on the slide, it must have revealed it, cause next thing I know, I feel a tug at my shirt, where my gun is. So I quickly turn around, and it goes as follows. Me, what's up little buddy? CK, let me see your gun. We are playing cowboys and he doesn't have one, points to friend. Me, no no. Sorry pal. No one can have this but me. It's dangerous. CK, looks angry, pretends to shoot me, and runs off. Over? I hoped but no. Soon, I hear a, ahem. Me, what? M, why can't my kid play with your toy? Me, what toy? M, the toy gun on your hip. Me, um, no sorry. This is a real gun and it's dangerous. Proceeds to check to make sure it's still hidden under shirt. It is. M, so just take the bullets out and let him play with it. Me, how about you duck off? M, baffled look. Well I never. What's the harm of him playing with it if it's unloaded? Me, I'm sure you haven't, and because loaded or not, I'm not letting a child play with a ducking gun you halfwit. Don't you have someone else's business to mind? M, I'm going to call the police, because you have a gun at a park. Me, go right the duck ahead. It's a public place. M, huffs and storms off not to be heard from, was an annoying encounter that put a damper on my already sour day. Gun safety is of the utmost importance. Good thing OP stuck to his guns and didn't let the kiddo or entitled mother have their way. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on the bell or you'll be running on fumes. See you in the next video.